Hey, hey, y'all. Welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander. And I first want to take the time to reflect on Memorial Day. Today is Memorial Day, and it signif signifies something really, really important. And it means something different, I think, for everyone. I just want to acknowledge the service men and women who continually spend their energy to protect and preserve our American dream. And for my international friends doing the same in their beloved homelands. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for your dedication to protecting our freedom. We get to do what we get to do because of those who serve and protect. And I'm so incredibly thankful and grateful for all of you who have done your part in that area. I appreciate you. I celebrate you. I know that when we say the word memorial, it, it usually means that someone has lost their lives. And we know that that has happened with all kinds of war throughout our, our entire universe. Um, there are many, many sacrifices that are made um, daily. And I just don't ever want to take that for granted. I really want to um, be grateful for that and be thankful for all of those that are served, that are, are serving, that have served, that have lost someone that has served um, in the military and in, in protecting our freedom, whatever that means. It might even be um, it, police officers, firefighters, our heroes, our people who protect and serve um, at all levels globally. Mommy Income thanks you. We are appreciated that we get to do what we get to do because you help keep us safe and protected. So thank you from the bottom of my heart and happy, I guess happy is not the right word, but um, as we reflect on Memorial Day, I am I'm painfully aware of what it takes to um, arrive at the place that we've arrived. To be and do what we are doing um, usually costs something. And we appreciate what it has costed each and every one of us and that has served or has loved someone who has served or has even passed because of their service. So just take a moment to reflect on that and to contemplate what that actually means. Um, I have nothing but gratitude for, for those of you who have done that and that have been um, a part of that in some form or another by indirectly or directly. But I think we're all directly affected um, by the result of what happens when the bravery and courage that it takes to serve and protect. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for that. Um, you are not unnoticed or unappreciated. Now, I want to bring something to your attention. Um, in case you didn't notice, which most people probably don't, this is the 300th episode of the Amazon Files, officially the 300th episode. Actually, there's 422 episodes, but as of being on Spotify, being official, we've had many episodes before that, but they weren't, they were more live shows and not exactly on this podcast platform. So 422 episodes, but officially counted on Spotify and everywhere else that you listen to your podcast, 300 official episodes 422 official episodes oh my word 300 so for those of you who have been with me from the beginning oh my word you have spent many hours listening to this podcast and 300 episodes you've been with me i mean i feel like we're besties now right i mean you guys know so much about me that you could probably um you, you guys probably just know everything about me i mean there's just not a lot to know i would love to know more about you honestly, because I sit here and I know that I'm in your earbuds or I'm on your YouTube in the background while you're, you know, doing whatever you're doing or walking your dog or whatnot. Um, but the hardest part, I guess, is that it's not a two-way conversation when you're listening. So I wish that there was more of that. I'm going to um, plan in the later this year, I'm going to plan kind of a, a group podcast where we can all get together and just talk and reflect and, and chat. So if you want to be a part of that, let me know, um, because I would love to invite you personally to kind of jump on a Zoom with me and just, you know, have a chat. Um, not just Q&A, &A, but just like, let's get to know each other. Y'all know everything about me. Y'all know I love tacos and cornhole and the Chiefs and Amazon and business and you know, all the things. So I just want to, 
on this day of reflection for all the different things that I've been so grateful and thankful for. Podcasting is one of them. It's it's like a therapy for me. Um, it's like there's so much benefit, I think, from organizing your thoughts and speaking them out loud um, that really helps me. It helps me move forward. I kind of talk about topics that I need help on or something that I recently just kind of had an aha moment about, or I learned something from somewhere that I finally applied. And it was like, why did I wait so long to do that? So I'm really just passing on the things that I've learned and the things that I've experienced uh, onto you. Number one, to help you, to help you not make mistakes that I've made, um, to help you figure things out because you don't know what you don't know. And there's no shame in that. There's no shame. Sometimes we shame ourselves or we feel guilty or we feel feel bad because, wow, I wish I'd known that all along. I mean, I'm having a lot of these moments lately. Um, but so what? You know it now. And now that's something that's priceless because no one can take away your knowledge. No one can take away what you have learned. So recently someone asked, oh, you've been podcasting a long time. Like, how do you make it through? And that's what I say. I say podcasting is actually like a therapy for me. I get to speak my mind. I get to organize my thoughts. I get to share them. I have people listening and responding. Like it's just like having a conversation. So I love doing this. And it, what makes it all worth it is that your feedback makes it worth it, to be honest. Like when people are reaching out to me and saying, oh my gosh, that podcast just hit me, hit home. I felt like you were talking right to me. Yeah, I am talking to you and I'm talking to me as well. So always picture arm in arm, never picture us like we're walking side by side. I'm not in front of you. I'm not standing over you, teaching you necessarily. Like we're, we're in this together. So well, I just figure we're all at the same round table or we're all arm in arm walking in the same direction. Uh, so I'm just, get the privilege of being the one behind the camera and the microphone. Um, but that takes all of you. So thank you so much for making the Amazon files podcast worth it. Um, thanks for listening week after week. Thank you for subscribing and leaving reviews. Y'all, if you haven't subscribed, if you're not subscribed and downloading, or you are not, um, you have not left a review for us, please do so as a celebration of this 300 official episodes. Um, could you please just leave a review? It could just be like, great show. It could just be like, wow, I like the curly hair. Like, <laughs> I don't know what you want to say, but I know it's awkward for people. Sometimes they don't know what to say. They don't know how to express what they get out of the show. But if you're listening on a weekly basis and you have not left a review for us, please do so. That just really helps us get ranked. What it does is it helps other people benefit from the show that you're benefiting from as well. So please share with that. That's not because I'm, I don't make any money from this podcast. Did y'all know that? I think some people don't realize podcasting is one of those like expensive hobby things. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, it doesn't really pay you. <laughs> you actually pay to produce it. You, you spend time, money, energy, um, to get the show up and running, to pay people to do the things or are doing them yourselves, whatever else. So, but it is my joy. So I'm fine with that. I just would appreciate if other people could hear the show, then uh, just share with them, share them with a link, share a podcast, share an episode, something like that, and leave a review for us, letting us know that you're still listening and that you still want me to create episodes. <laughs> so, all right, let's get to today's topic, which is competition. We know there's lots of competition out there. There's always competition in every and anything we do, unless you are like an innovator. But then eventually, if you innovate something within a few years, someone's right on your coattails uh, doing the very same thing that, you know, it's it's the highest form of flattery to be copied. Right. Um, but at the same time, we have real competitors that have part of the market share. So what are we going to do about that? Do we we'll get to that? There's just a few things that we can do. But sometimes it starts with contemplative. It starts with being contemplative, to really think, to really focus, to really be intentional. Y'all, I'm going to say that word all the time. Your intentions matter. We are not just floating through life, accidentally just kind of getting through the day. Our days can be so much better and so much more fulfilling and so much more full of joy if we're intentional about what our day looks like. If we're intentional about who we choose to talk to and what we choose to put in our eyes and ears so that we can live out those things. So we need to be intentional about our competition. Now, 
I know some people are naturally more competitive and some people are naturally not. Like I'm one of those naturally not people. Um, I like as a kid, like I love to play games, but I love the community part of playing games. I love the people side. Like if I'm sitting across from you playing Euchre or Rummy or something like that, like I just love to play cards. My dad taught me poker at like eight years old. We used to play like Penny Annie poker or sometimes we'd even play like we dump like a bag of pretzels out and everybody gets like a handful or a pile and we'd bet like two or three pretzels, whatever. It was just a fun time and I loved that. And we just like to play cards and my dad was kind of a gamer. You know, I say before gaming was cool, you know, he had like this whole Commodore 64 like set up and he used to play these flights simulator games and stuff like that. My dad was hugely competitive. Uh, me, not so much. My sister, yes. Um, she's uh, fantastic at, at competing. You know, some people are just naturally that way. Um, I've never been a competitor. I'm more of like a collaborator. Like I'm like, look at how can we work together to both win? Because I didn't like losing, but I didn't like other people losing at my expense either. It's really this weird thing. It's like, I'm so sorry that I beat you. <laughs> Y'all, I'm still working on this because sometimes so I, I'm just, I'm a good competitor against myself because I feel like that's the only thing I can control. And so we're going to talk about that, about our competition and about our own mindset about competition so that we can approach it with a business mindset and with a win-win kind of mindset. Now, honestly, do we really want our competitors to win? Eh. Some of us do, some of us don't. I think of the rising tide raising all ships. I have abundance mentality. I really believe there's a piece of the pie for everyone. That being said, it doesn't mean that we can't improve what we're doing, AKA our own competition. So whether you are naturally like, I am gonna take you down and kick your butt and I'm gonna be on top and I'm gonna win and I am gonna do it at all costs. There are fierce competitors like that. They literally do something else, but they all, they, most of them, I can't say all because I'm not going to overgeneralize, um, but I've done some research into um, being competitive and what it really takes to be strong. And what I've noticed, what I've noticed about tough competitors, whether they're in business or in sports or in any other um, tough negotiators and things like that, is the best way to compete is to compete against yourself. Compete against yourself. Because if you win by playing dirty, like, how do you feel at the end of the day? If you win by some random, you know, miscalculation or, or by some like technicality, like, is that really, how you want to walk away. I mean, sometimes people are like, hey, it's a win, it's a win. You you fight and claw and hair pull and gouge out eyes to get to the top. Okay. No matter what competitor you are, where the brother it's like me, where it's like, I'm so sorry I beat you. <laughs> or it's that I am, you know, I will crush you to the top. Like there's no right or wrong necessarily. It's just about an approach and about what we're going to do with the information in order to beat our competitors. Because honestly, who doesn't want to be the top? Who doesn't want to be the best, right? I mean, you don't have to be the best to win. That's what I need to tell you right now, especially when it comes to business, especially when it comes to your bottom line, especially when it comes to e-commerce, Amazon. You don't have to be top page one, number one all the time to make a decent living. I rarely, rarely hit page one, number one. Occasionally I do and launch something, but eventually it kind of goes down. No one stays at the top forever because it takes everything you've got and it also puts a target on your back no matter what you're competing against if you're number one page one someone always wants your position period somebody always wants your position there's a target on your back if you're number one because there's somebody out there that intends to work harder find your weaknesses find your flaws and capitalize on them. That's just the hard truth. So what are we gonna do about it? Well, here's one thing that I've learned. If you want to be a true competitor, compete only with yourself. Why? Because at the end of the day, that's the only thing you can control. You can't control bad calls in a game you can't control fouls. You can't control the weather. You can't control your competitor. 
You can't. But what can you control? You. What can you measure? Your stats. Right? I mean, honestly, have you ever had this happen to you? Because I have, and it's kind of, you know, it can induce a lot of like whole bottle of wine, whole pile of chocolates, kind of ugly cry, you know? Have you ever had someone that started at the same time as you or after you, and yet they've surpassed you in whatever that thing is? Maybe it's Amazon. Maybe it's a, this happens a lot with siblings too. Like, honestly, like why is so-and-so so so much better at this stuff than I am? And I started and I've been doing this forever, you know, whatever it is. It's not a shame or a comparison thing, but it's a wonderment of if they started after me and they've already surpassed me, what is it that they're doing that I'm not doing? It's a simple measure of time, money, commitment, action, discipline. All those things factor into success, right? Let's talk about success. Let's talk about that for just a second. How you measure success, how you measure progress, how you measure all of these things is extremely important. Because honestly, what if your measuring stick was like, okay, well, I started January 1 of 2014, and this person started January 1 of 2014, and I didn't hit a million dollars until, you know, 2017, and so how is this going to happen? They hit a million dollars two years later, and now they're at 10 million. Okay. The starting point is not what we measure. You can start on the same day. Someone can graduate college the same day as you, and they could be earning seven figures the next year. There's so many things that factor in that comparison is not acceptable to other people. We will not be comparing ourselves and measuring our success based on someone else's measuring stick, someone else's timeline, someone else's milestones. You have to measure you from your starting point. What have you done? What have you committed to time, money, energy, action? If you measure a fish's success on her ability to fly, you're always going to find failure. Let me say that again for the people in the back, for the people that weren't listening or were distracted. If you measure a fish's success on their ability to fly, you're always going to find failure. So let me ask you this. How are you measuring your success? Are you comparing it to a sibling? Are you comparing it to a mentor you're following? Are you comparing it to other people who are um, building businesses and surpassing you? Are you comparing it to me? What are you measuring against? Being a competitor of your own self is the best measurement for your success. You versus you using your starting point, using your assets, using your stats, your progress. What did you start with? When did you start? What kind of education did you invest in? What kind of money did you have? Some people start with thousands of dollars or a life savings or a fat check from their Uncle Joe. (laughs) I started with $100 and a pile of used books with a bunch of clunky equipment that was very outdated. But I started. And now we're embarking on year nine of mommy income and year 20 in e-commerce. So think about that. If you started with $100 in your grandma's basement and this guy started with 30,000, excuse me. This guy started with $30,000 and a ton of business experience, you're going to climb the ladder a little bit faster. And guess what? So what? That's not your problem. That's not your ladder. Climb your ladder. And guess what else is great about that? And think about competition. My, <clears throat> my biggest thing is who cares? But we need to be aware because we do have competitors and we do have a market share and we do want to be competitive in the space with what we're offering, our products or services or whatever business that you're in or whatever it is you're trying to accomplish in life and in everything else. Competition is real, but it doesn't have to overwhelm us and we are surely not focusing on it. We're gonna focus on ourselves. We're gonna focus on what we can do. 
We're going to measure our ability to fly. Right? Competition is everywhere. The first thing that you need to know is where are you starting from? Where's your starting point? What progress have you made so far? And where is it that you want to go? Where is it that you want to go? Your competition is going to be everywhere. Comparison is always going to be everywhere. Comparison is the thief of joy. And I will say it's a thief of success. The more and more you're looking at what everybody else is doing, the more you're taking your eyes off what you're doing. It's a distraction. Be aware and then be active. So we're going to go through these things. You're going to know yourself and your goals first. What do you want? Where did you start from? Where have you come from? And where are you going? You guys, I'm not going to leave you alone about this. Not going to leave you alone. I'm really hoping and praying that when I give you some of these homework pieces, that you do them. It's for your own good. We always say we don't have time. We don't have energy. We don't have time to do all this stuff. You don't have time not to. If you really want to grow, you need to be aware of yourself and your goals. And then also be aware of your competitors and their goals because they're out there ready to devour you. Not everybody's like me to be like, oh, I'm so glad we're all winning. I mean, I know that's my mentality and I really wish everybody had that. But at the end of the day, there can be many winners in the game that we're playing the e-commerce, Amazon, business world, the business world in general. Many, many people. I mean, how many shoe companies are there? And how many shoe companies, we all have different loyalties. Some people absolutely live and die with Nikes. Some people absolutely live and die with Skechers or Dr. Scholl's or Tim's. I mean, my daughter and her Tim's, man. I mean, high quality, well-made boots. But still, whatever it is, whether you like Nike or Docs or jimmy chews honestly whatever shoe you like there's plenty of competition out there and they all do something a little bit different and they're all surviving and thriving just fine but they do are aware of each other and they they very much learn from each other but they're climbing their own ladders let's learn from the very successful businesses out there who have tons of competition and yet still thrive So it's not an excuse to go under. It's not an excuse to say, woe is me and I can't and I won't and all these terrible bad words that we don't want to use here. Know yourself, know your goals, know what you want, and then know thine enemy. They say, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Absolutely, why not? Because here's why. We're going to do three things to be more competitive, to smash our competition, to move them out of the way. Research, reflection, and response. Okay, that's where we're going to start. Research, reflection, and response. Research and awareness. We have competitors. I don't, even in the wholesale bundle system and building our own brands, there are still competitors out there. I know I don't have the only cornhole bags listed on Amazon. I know I don't have the, I know I don't have the only bundles, Mother's Day gift sets and things of that sort. I don't have the only bundles out there. There are many competition, there are many competitors. So we must be aware of them, but not focused on them. We're not gonna spend a ton of time doing this. We're gonna do this maybe once a quarter, once every couple of, I don't know, maybe once or twice a year even. Look at the competition, see what's out there. We must be aware of them, but not focused on them and not definitely not worried. We're just examining, we're just doing research. We're not attaching feeling or meaning or success or failure on this stuff. We are just simply examining. Who else is providing the same or similar product that I am? What do they do well? Who are they serving? Are they serving the exact customer? Are they actually a competitor? Are they serving the same market? And with what? And what kind of quality? And what are they putting out there? Have you purchased something from your competitor so that you can examine it and compare it and decide how you want to do it a little bit better or different. What do they do well? Acknowledge their work. Support it even. To learn from it. Research and awareness. We will be aware that we have competitors all the time. That's great. We're not going to focus there. We're just going to become aware. Know thy enemy, right? So we're going to know them. Get to know them. Follow them on social media. Watch what they're doing with their marketing, if they have any. If they have a brand store, follow their brand store. 
Order a product from them and see the quality. Test it, compare it, look at it. Nike and Adidas are competitors. You think they are not aware of the shoes that are being put out and who's making them and how high quality and they're not paying attention to their customer reviews of your opposites, of your competitors? Pay attention. Read the reviews on all of the stuff that you feel is a competitor of yours or maybe even something similar. Read their reviews. Look at their customer service policy. What do they offer? Just be aware of them. This is not so that we can measure our success against theirs and go, oh, woe is me. They're just so much farther along. I mean, y'all, I play the same game you do in my head. My head is a jumbled mess sometimes and I really have to. Did you know you're the best preacher for yourself? It's not on Sunday morning when you go to church and you hear the pastor or whatever. You're actually the preacher that you hear the most often. You talk to yourself. So what are you saying to yourself? We're not going to compare here. We're not necessarily comparing. We're just being aware that we have competitors and what they do well and making a list of these things. Then you're going to reflect on that. Reflect. And y'all, this can take just 15 minutes. It doesn't have to take forever. Just be aware of it. Pay attention to it. Do the exercise here and then see how much it changes your business. Because I'm not asking you to move mountains. Okay, so reflect. Now Now that you're aware of your competitors, two or three, four or five, whatever they are, where are the possible gaps in their product or service? What are they not doing? What are they missing? Do they have an opportunity that you can capitalize on? Have you read all of their reviews and decided that some of their customers are begging for a product that they don't offer? Y'all, this is how I've created some products. Reading the reviews of what I consider competitors and then improving my next product based on the customers leaving. Look, if you see an Amazon listing that has 3000 star reviews, read some of them, even read, you know, spend 15 minutes reading reviews. Y'all, me and my 15 minutes, me and my 15 minute timer, get with the program. If you don't have the 15 minute hustle and you don't practice the 15 minute hustle, You could probably get 10 more things done on your list today than you ever thought possible. 15 minute hustle. My book is on Amazon. Um, You can buy one on the website, mommyincome.com. Look for 15 minute hustle. There's a little bit of workbook. There's a chart. Like it's not difficult, but I'm telling you it's revolutionary. Spend a 15 minute hustle on your competitors. What are the possible gaps in their product or service? What are the customers saying that they wish they had more of? Are they listening? Are they giving the customers what they want? Because if not, that's an opportunity for you. Read the reviews on your own bundles, on your own stuff, on the things that you even retail arbitrage then. Read the reviews and see what the customers are giving as far as feedback. And honestly, most of the time people's reviews are kind of negative feedback. They give you all the problems. Well, I wish it had this, I wish it did this, or it was okay, but it fell apart or, you know, whatever. Don't take it personal. Take it back to the drawing board and reinvent it and recreate it and make it the way the customer wants. Because when you do, they pay. Ask the iPhone. The iPhone has done, uh, uh, Apple has done nothing but listen to their customers and produce high quality, better products. Every year that they release an iPhone, they have done customer research and they say, what went right? What went wrong? How can we improve? How can we do this better? And then every year they release a new one that's bigger and better and more wonderful and has great more features. They didn't just make that all stuff up. They asked you and me, right? So that's what we need to do. And then ask yourself, what are they doing? What are my competitors doing that I can learn from? What were they doing that would also work for me? Did you know that you can bring another product to the table that people like variety? How many pairs of shoes and different brands do you have? I mean, yeah, I'm speaking to my lady friends here, but um, gentlemen, if you're like any gentleman in my house, they have multiple pairs of shoes. They have boots, they have work boots, they have winter boots, they have loafers, they got deck shoes, they got flops, they got slides. They, I mean, We all got shoes, right? I mean, way more shoes than we need. Different brands, different styles, different colors, different customers. So you can offer the same thing someone else is offering, but it's gotta stand out. It's gotta be a little bit different. It's gotta meet the same need in a different sort of way. What are they doing that you can also do that will also work for you? Also reflect on what results they seem to be getting. How much market share do they have? in the shoe market you know how much market share does anyone have and specifically and are you comparing apples to apples first of all making sure they are actually a customer or a competitor excuse me 
So if you're comparing apples to apples, you'll have a comparison. But if you're if you're comparing Nike to Jimmy Choo, it's not the same. These are high end, high heels, and you're talking about Air Jordans. They mo- by, both might be expensive and high quality, but to be honest, they're totally they're not competitors. High heeled shoes are not competitors with Nike. So you have to make sure you're comparing the right competitors to what you are actually offering. You're serving the same customer. That is your true competition. What do they do well? What the res- what results are they getting? And then finally, once we digest all of this stuff, asking just two or three questions. This is not some deep contemplative eight hour activity, but it will help you. And then respond. So we're researching, we're reflecting, and we're responding. What product or service can I provide that is a better value than my competition? What are the gaps in their services and products and how can I fill the gaps? What did I learn in the research that I can actually take action on? What shifts do I need to capture? Shifts do I need to make to capture more of the market share? If your customer is looking like, you know, if you use like Helium 10 or Jungle Scout or AMZ Scout or whatever, you can see that the, like the AMZ, um, scout pro extension has like estimated revenue or estimated number of sales per month and i know that's estimated but it's a margin of error who cares it's estimated but it does say something if it says that they're selling 100 units of this per month give or take and you're selling 50 that's a significant gap what are they doing that you can do to capture more of the market share what do we do well as a company? Or ask yourself that. What do I do well? What products, what do my products do well? And what do they not do well? Everybody's got flaws and weaknesses. So look and see what does this company do well? What do they do that they're providing? And how can we improve upon that? Can you provide something that they can't? Do you have access to something that they can't? Can you create, can you create something that they can't? That's the that's the biggest question. If you can fill the gaps, you can get more of the market share. And finally, what action can you take in the next seven days to improve based on what you learned? This might take less time than it takes to listen to this episode, to be honest. Just sit down. Who are my competitors? If you type in your product, what other products come up with your keywords? Those are your competitors. Look at them. Examine them. What are they doing? What are their price points? What are they offering? What does their brand store look like? What kind of products do they look? Do they look boring and mundane? Are they using lifestyle photos? Are they offering multiple variations? Are like, what? where can you fill the gaps? This doesn't have to be hard. It has to be intentional. I really think we just don't give ourselves enough time to think, to innovate, to reflect, to actually look. We're so busy in the day-to-day, are we not? We're so busy in our day-to-day, just doing the task and checking it off and responding to Seller Central and to adding new bundles and to paying invoices and to contacting the prep centers, all the day-to-day stuff that we're not giving ourselves enough time to increase our bottom line. And sometimes that's a small tweak that we do to a listing, or we read reviews for 15 minutes and all of a sudden have 14 different product ideas because we, our customers told us what they wanted. Make the time, make the time. Give yourself time to think and innovate and reflect. Examine your competition. Get closer to them to learn so that you can change, so that you can grow. There's always opportunities. We don't wait for them to come to us. We will seek them out. Seek out the opportunity to be better than your competitors just by examining them. Research. Type in your keyword. This is exactly how. For those how-to practical people, yes, this is the end of the show and I'm giving you the how-to. Go to Amazon. Type in your keywords for your top product. 
not your product, your top keyword phrase for your product, and then examine everyone on page one. Read their reviews, look at their pictures, compare them to yours side by side. Not for shame, not for, oh my gosh, I'm so bad, or these people do things so bad, blah, blah, blah. Forget all that. It's going to come because that's natural. No, we're like, we're not here for this. What are they doing? What can we improve upon? Read the reviews, look at their pictures, look at their listings, look at their keywords. Don't copy them verbatim. You don't want to copy them. What can you do better? One thing one thing because i promise you they don't have a hundred percent of the market share no one does there's room for you there's room for improvement for all of us take the time speaking of time i know you guys could be anywhere else doing any other thing right now i don't take that for granted thank you for spending time with me today at the amazon files Thank you for taking the time to listen to these hard things and tell me for sure that you're going to implement something that we said today. I hope you've been encouraged. I hope you're full of hope. I hope you're full of excitement and that you're going to stop comparing yourself and you're going to look at your competition, snuggle up to them, figure out what they're doing and do it a little bit better. Till next time, we'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.